Howdy friends, Tadis here with Insomniac Next Door. It's been a while and uh, today I wanted to share with you something that I should have shared a long time ago. And uh, this, the, the, the information comes from about five years of researching and experimenting with different supplements for uh, insomnia and I've had it for over five years and I'm slowly recovering. I mean, it's, uh, sleep is not my biggest issue right now. I also have uh, you know heavy metals toxicity, namely mercury, and that's a much longer process. But sleep is definitely recovering. And uh, here are some of the tips that I uh, have um, I've come across uh, to be very effective to get a better night's sleep. And uh, uh, the you know the advice will be beyond the obvious things uh, you already. Uh, find uh, online these days like you know some some magic pillows or EMFs or mel melatonin you know getting a better mattress or a magic you know nightgown and like things happy thoughts and so on right and uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit more uh, meat on the bone so to speak that I think you should try and uh, I know either one or a combination of these things will, will should actually make a, a good impact for you all right, so let's uh, start with one thing. Uh, an important thing is to set the ground for experimenting with these things, and that means uh, cutting off all the supplements you're currently taking, uh, unless they're absolutely ne necessary for you to keep your, you know, thinking straight and your and your uh, uh, body functioning. Uh, I would I would advise at this point to. Uh, cut them all off uh, to try some of these tips here because what you need is a good baseline to uh, to see whether you're improving or you're uh, you're you know you're making things worse right so uh, I'll 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 give them to you I'll give you ten of them in no particular order and by the way uh, don't worry if you miss something or I mumble something uh, because you can always go back I put a link under the video here to my uh, to a blog post that will be much more detailed. Uh, Alright, so uh, insomnia from a Chinese uh, medicine perspective is a disturbance of Shen, so to speak. And it basically has to do with your heart, uh, heart uh, energy because your heart is connected to your entire nervous system, right? I mean, it's like the boss of the nervous system. So uh, what Chinese say, and it's very wise and sort of comes uh, to, to, you know, I've found it true to be in practices, <clears throat> your heart will not sleep if it's harassed by heat and uh, uh, what happens is usually there is because of dysfunctioning organs usually heat rises from either the liver or your digestion and harasses the heart at night so one of the best things to do is to cool your heart and that uh, is done by the use of uh, heart tonic so to speak so some of them you might have heard about are uh, things like uh, mother wort uh, and uh, hawthorn, but uh, the one that comes from Chinese medicine, it's, it's uh, number one herb in Chinese medicine, I would say, for heart, uh, for, for tonifying your heart, is salvia. Uh, salvia, and you'll see, I, I put a link there, you should, you should be able to find it uh, online and, and try it. So besides that, if you're in the Western world, try hawthorn uh, and motherwort, especially motherwort because it is a cooling herb. So. I also recommend the Chinese formula called Codonopsis and Sisyphus combination, and you'll see it's a combination of, of certain herbs that that uh, feed your uh, that that uh, basically feed your digestion and uh, cool cool your heart and it helps you sleep better. All right, number two is magnesium, especially uh, in the citrate citrate or citrate form. Magnesium is like a lubricant for your entire nervous system. Uh, and it's one of the most wonderful things I think for uh, for uh, for insomniacs and people in general with anxiety or overstressed uh, lifestyles, right? It's uh, it really relaxes the muscles and relaxes the mind. Uh, and at night, uh, you you should you should uh, feel a big difference. It's one of the things that made the biggest difference. So, number three is light uh, is stretching. I, I I say light stretching because you you know you don't want to overdo it at night. And basically, your muscles are in constant communication with the nervous system, and stretching will not only increase uh, mobility of your, you know, joints, but also uh, uh, inhibit the overreactive uh, nervous system. It's called the sympathetic response, right? And uh, it inhibits the flight or fight response, and it helps you to shift over into the 
a parasympathetic state, which is a state of relaxation. So light stretching, especially in hamstrings, you know, your legs and so on. Try that uh, later in the evening. You should feel like nice and warm and relaxed, which is how you want to hit the pillows, right? And uh, it's, uh, number four is what really works for me. Without this, I don't sleep very well at all. And that is uh, quitting, uh, quitting eating at 6 p.m. It's like the last meal is 6 p.m. That's it. No more food. You can drink like light tea or, or, or water, but you don't want to. Uh, the reason for this is uh, you don't want to, uh, um, to to extend your digestion into a nighttime, right? Your digestion needs uh, to rest, especially your liver. Um, and what happens is well, because if if you if you leave food in your digestion. Uh, especially your stomach, right? It's something, you know, your liver has to produce <clears throat> um, extra bile and so on, and it's basically, you know, if it's overburdened already, it's going to start heat, you know, heating up and so on, and will, I guess, harass your heart, like, you know, like number one point, right? So what you want to do is let your liver rest at night, and uh, one of the things that you are to, to remove uh, uh, heat from the liver is to use herbs like milk thistle, right? And that's uh, going to not only help your liver detox; it's going to help it uh, create, uh, produce more glutathione and uh, antioxidant, and also uh, it will it will require less uh, effort for your liver to to function and detox at night. And I talk about, about this often: is actually your liver is does the does the heaviest lifting, so to speak, at night for detoxing uh, from from 1 to 3 p.m. or so, uh, sorry, a.m. Right. Uh, many of us are not aware of it. Anyway, so use uh, try milk thistle, right? Number five. Number six is eliminate agitation from uh, food sensitivities, and this is a big one. And I've, I've been struggling for its food sensitivities for a long time, ever since this mess started, of course. And uh, I wish, I wish I, I, I learned about this earlier. But uh, high histamine foods and high thiol foods are a big problem, uh, and especially if you're in some years. Uh, is uh, is very stubborn like mine. Uh, you can you can fix a lot of things with uh, eliminating food sensitivity. So basically, when your liver is stressed, your adrenals are stressed. You're not methylating properly. You're not digesting properly. Your food can become t total toxic and overburden your uh, your your system. So you know do the most basic things like eliminate dairy. Right. Uh, the, that's a uh, that's an inflammatory food as, as well as gluten, especially from wheat. And, you know, sometimes I do rye bread, and not not too often, but and I do find and, uh, and wheat usually causes uh, uh, problems. So uh, dairy, get rid of wheat, and uh, try low uh, eliminating high histamine foods. Look up a list for that online, and uh, thiol foods, especially high thiol foods. And they're in garlic, onion, eggs, you know, they're, they're broccoli, cabbage, I mean, you, there's a, it's a big list of things, but if you try, you can, you can, uh, you know, uh, for, you know, I, I will do anything for, to get a good night's sleep, so I'm crazy like that, if I have to eat, like, you know, uh, wood and, and tree leaves, I'll do it, just because it's so important for me to recover, so don't stress about this diet, it's a temporary thing, eliminate those things, see how you do. Uh, number seven, try an uh, ibuprofen. Uh, that I came across by, uh, you know, by accident. And I took an ibuprofen, ibuprofen and I, I kind of slept through and most of the night and woke up kind of relaxed, more, more like in this refreshed feeling and said, what, what, what's that? You know, that, that was weird. And uh, apparently um, uh, most of the symptoms we're experiencing insomnia at night it's the same stuff you're experiencing during daytime, and you're, you're, the problem is at night it, it, it affects your sleep, right? So, and it's usually in some some sort of neuroinflammation or inflammation in the gut. Uh, so, if you if uh, an anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen, especially, right, it will suppress those symptoms for a while. And if you if you sleep better, it will give you a clue. It will it will mean that you're basically dealing with inflammation, and you need to dig deeper, right? So number seven is uh, try ibuprofen before bedtime. Eight, number eight is try a non-drowsy antihistamine, right? You know, you, you've heard about Zyrtec, for example, right? Um, and um, histamine is not your enemy overall. You know, it's, um, it's involved in your sleep-wake cycle and our uh, circadian rhythm. The uh, problem is we're not met, when we're not um, breaking down histamine, it can accumulate and it can give you symptoms overall on your skin or 
how you feel, your nervous system. But at night, you know, well, basically, the, the reason it's 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 not a friend at night because it's a it's a stimulant overall. It's a neurostimulant, right? So, and it's again a byproduct of a few things. Either you're not uh, you're not breaking down histamine, or it's produced naturally uh, by your body to quench uh, inflammation. So, but anyway, so, so what you want to do is, if inflammation is an issue, try like an antihistamine, like Zyrtec. And I have to stress that it has to be non-drowsy type because um, uh, if you take drowsy, you know, you'll just you'll kind of get you know sleepy anyways, and you won't know whether. Uh, histamine is your issue, uh, but non-drowsy type, you know, if you sleep better, you sleep through the night, you'll know, oh, histamine is a big problem, so then you can avoid foods, you can take certain things to uh, to produce more antihistamine naturally, and so on. So for the past two, like, uh, points that I that I mentioned, the uh, uh, anti-inflammatory and the histamine are not a long-term solution, you probably understand that, right? I mean, especially like ibuprofen can damage your liver if you take it for too long, so don't take it. It's just for the test, just to see what how you respond to that. And maybe occasionally when you really need a good, you know, a lot of energy tomorrow, take it just to cheat a little bit. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it for longer than a week or so. Uh, same with antihistamine. You don't want to, uh, you know, accustom your body to having antihistamine in your system because your brain will start producing more, and you don't want that, right? Because if you keep pre suppressing it, your brain will say, oh, I keep producing it, but it's not, it's not, you know, having the effect, so I'll produce more, and anyways, in a month or so, you'll have extra stuff that you won't have, you, you won't know how to deal with. Number nine, religiously rigid bedtime, and, you know, uh, you hear about, you know, you have to be you go to bed on time, but uh, I, I'm no, I'm, I'm crazy. Like I'm religious about this stuff, and everybody that knows me knows that I'm insane. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll quit. Like I'll leave a party, or I'll, I'll cut a movie short, or I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I won't even wait for New Year's. I, you know, I'll go home on Christmas, you know, just to be in bed by 10 o'clock. And why? It's because that time from 10 to 1, uh, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Is the is 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 the the time where you get be best quality sleep? Uh, it's a different topic, but then just take my word for it. This is where you're gonna get your deepest, most restful sleep. And even if you're just staying a semi awake uh, state for the rest of the night, you'll still be able to somewhat function uh, uh, next day. But if you miss that period, you're screwed. For if you go to bed midnight or one. You know, you're going to get very light sleep. It, you're going to wake up as if you had no sleep anyway. So it's, it's just, you have to go on time and train your circadian rhythm and train your nervous system to fall asleep by 10 and get as much sleep as you can when you fall asleep at that time. So this is the, um, I would say, uh, if you're not, if, you're, if your rhythm uh, of going to bed is not, is not rigid, if, it's not, if you're not doing it uh, same time every day, you're not giving yourself a, a good chance to, uh, to, to train yourself to, uh, to have a good night's sleep. So do that, yeah? And uh, number 10 is something that I've talked about already before, and that's learn. I would suggest and invite you to learn and uh, start the Qigong practice. And uh, there's different Qigong practices, and uh, the one that I practice is the one where you kind of accumulate energy in your, in your, in your uh, middle uh, dantian, so to speak, or the energy center and also a standing tree meditation. And both of those meditation, med meditations, what they do is, they're not physical, I have to move, I don't have to lift anything. I basically stand there, and basically what I do is, you go to a certain posture and you do a, a certain visualization, and believe it or not, it actually charges the battery from, from, from external environment. It's possible to char charge a battery. I wouldn't be BSing you here on this channel, you know me. So Qigong works, and what happens if you charge your battery, not only are you going to function better next day, even if you get li little sleep, you, you'll have more energy. And second, you give your body more fuel to regenerate, to, to, to recover, and to heal, right? You, you basically help it turn on its inner uh, intelligence. Our bodies know how to, how to recover, but they're so drained, it's like a car, it just won't run if you put bad fuel or if it's, uh, you know, if it's, uh, if, if it's, you know, the system is clogged, right? But the car has potential, a potential to, to run smooth and, and, and uh, you, you need to give that computer self-cleaning basically message, so to speak, and uh, the car will, will, will run smoothly, same with our bodies. Our bodies cannot even be compared to our, to our, to our, to, to the car because, you know, we, we have this innate intelligence inside of our bodies 
that, 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 that make them function without us even wanting it to function, right? We can write, we can make love, uh, watch a movie, but our, you know, there's, uh, there's intelligence inside us that keeps the heart rhythm going, keeps the blood pressure and the sugar, and the sugar levels even, you know, and so on. So Qigong helps your body to, um, to find the equalizing, you know, ground to, to help it, uh, uh, recover and help you feel better at night. I really highly, highly recommend you starting that practice and you can find more info on my blog. So, in summary, in order to enjoy better sleep, what you need to do is basically you need to relieve your digestion, right, from working at night and, you know, reduce inflammatory foods, uh, uh, block out, you know, uh, histamine, uh, I mean, uh, uh, take out high histamine foods and, um, of course, uh, try the low thial diet, right? So, and once you do that, you know, you take those uh, heart and liver tonics to help them keep, you know, keep cool at night because when you wake up, I bet you, when you wake up, you're hot. You're much warmer than you went to bed, right? And that's usually what happens. It's usually your organs, are, especially your liver, the largest organ, it's, and it's, it generates a lot of heat. So this is why you wake up. Your, 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 your heart and your, your, your nervous system uh, sends an alarm system to your brain and says, whoo, you know, fire or something, wake up, wake up, do something, right? So, anyways, try to take those uh, cooling tonics to, uh, to, to help your organs uh, stay cooler and uh, regenerate and, and detox at night better. And, of course, try the Qigong practice that I, that I mentioned, and you'll find more info online. So, I think that's pretty much it. I, I, I know uh, this, this, is a, this is accumulation of various different uh, advice and, and wisdom that I've accumulated over the years. Uh, I really advise you to try it. Uh, leave me a comment if this works. And for more uh, information and detail uh, on every one of these um, uh, points that I just mentioned, uh, go to uh, go to that blog, to in, uh, Insomniac Next Door. You'll see the link on the, on the bottom of this video, and I can see you there. Answer more questions and so on. So sleep better. I hope uh, someday we will. Take care for now. Until next time.